Hello, and welcome back to Watercolor Fundamentals. This is going to be episode 14, Moisture Control. So today we're going to look at moisture control um, in watercolor painting. And you need a few things to, you know, get set up with this. Obviously, we've got some paint. I've already got a puddle ready to go there, and I've mixed the puddle up as I've described. Um, in a couple of that earlier episodes on making a puddle from tubes and making puddles from pans. I've got a container of clean water right there. And probably the most important thing that I'm going to be using for this particular um, demonstration is this little towel. It could be a towel, it could be a sponge, it could be, you know, a folded up piece of paper towel. Really something that you're going to use to um, dab your brush or blot or whatever you want to call it. Um, but really to kind of control the, the moisture in the brush. And of course, some paper. Um, I'm just using, um, it's a sketchbook from a local art store. It's um, cold press surface paper. It's going to work well for what I want to talk about here. So before we get going, let's talk quickly about the brush itself. So you can see I've got a um, little, it's a calligraphy style brush, but it's similar in size to a number eight round. But the things I'm going to talk about uh, apply to a standard um, round eight. So at the tip here, we obviously we have the, the tip of our brush. And then this fatter area at the back is our belly. Uh, for our brush. And that's actually where, you know, most of the paint should be stored, right? So you're going to get to use your brush for a fair bit before having to recharge it or reload it with more paint. But when we load a brush with the paint, um, the whole thing just kind of pops up. So if you're having issues with getting, you know, you have a nice tip on your brush, but you rarely ever see it, often it's because we have too much paint in the brush. There's too much moisture in there, so it's all kind of bloated. So moisture control is going to be one of the first things you're going to want to do to try to get some of that shape back in your brush. And that's where something like a sponge or a towel comes in handy. So you can see, you know, right now, it's got a nice little point to my brush. But if I take this in here and just load it up with water, it has no point. It's just full of water, right? So, you know, I could load this thing up like this and go and go, hey, where's, where's my point? Well, I need to control the moisture. And I can do that by just tapping the tip. I'm not going flat into it, just at a bit of an angle, probably about 30 or so degrees. And I can just run the tip into my towel. And what I do is I just kind of roll it a little bit. And then I get a tip back. There's still a lot of moisture, but it's all back where it should be, in the belly, and not in the tip, making it all bloated. So I can actually get, you know, a bit more control with my brush if I use it at this state, as opposed to what it looked like a moment ago. The other thing for doing this is, I've seen this happen too many times as an instructor where, you know, new students will go and they load their paint up and they come in and it's fully loaded with paint and they're moving and it just like drips, right? So if, Learning moisture control is just something that's kind of new to you. This is definitely the one thing you don't want to do is just go in, load it up, assuming this is not water, but a fully loaded brush full of paint. You come across and you, you know, hear a noise, turn, whatever, make a jerky movement. Next thing you know, you're going to be dropping paint in potentially unwanted areas. So never leave a puddle and actually even with water, because um, you could drop water into um, a, an area that you've just put a wash in and inadvertently drop some water into it. And that could create a bloom or something that you might not want in that particular area. So 
Never go into your painting with a totally loaded brush that is just so full it just leaks paint out or water as well as I, as I just described. So you always wanna just give it a, a little tap or even just a quick run off the side just to get some of that moisture out so that it's not gonna drip everywhere, okay? So if nothing else, don't do that. That's a really good place to start. Okay, so that's enough with the water. Let's grab a little bit of paint and talk about a few things here. So loading the brush, I've seen this too many times too. You take the brush, it's damp, you get all the most of the moisture out, right? We have a nice little tip there. And I see just a little tip of the brush go in there and then people go in and they'll try to paint and then they try and run as much as they can. And you can see maybe at the end here where it's starting to get a little broken. And they'll just keep trying to stretch it out. And they go back in, they, I need more. And they just grab a little bit more. And you just keep going. That's really not what you want to do. What you want to do is you want to get that brush right in there. Just soak that brush because dipping the tip in like I was just doing is not filling up that area that I spoke to the belly it's just putting some paint in the tip and only a little bit so if I do the same thing you notice I have not added any more paint and I haven't added any more water and then I just give a little dab in here to make sure I've got my tip now I'm full of paint there and I go in and I can get a lot more mileage out of my brush without having to go back in and recharge it. So almost three times as much. And as soon as you start seeing, if you want to make this bigger, as soon as you start seeing little broken strokes starting to show up, you just need to get right back in and pick up some paint right away. Not going into the water, just going straight into the paint. And that way, as long as I just keep moving, I can create a nice large area and I don't have to worry about adding any water and diluting it and it stays nice and consistent. But you can see right away, by filling that brush up, controlling the tip there, I can do about what, four times almost as much space with the same brush. Whereas before, with just dabbing the tip in, I was running out pretty quick. So whatever brush you're using, this one does hold quite a bit of moisture. If it's, you know, a, a cheaper synthetic brush kind of thing, um, you, you're still going to get more mileage if you go in and really load your brush up. Now, there was something else at the end there that I wanted to talk about, so I'll have to recreate that. Because there was a little bit of excess moisture at the bottom, but not too much because I did sort of run the brush out. So... I'm not going to go in here. I'm just going to keep working with paint. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to load this brush right up. Give it a little tip here. Not much. And you'll see this happen. This is another type of moisture control where I've got this brush is really loaded with paint. And then when I release it, see how it leaves that little bit of paint there. Now, you might not want that there. And generally, I wouldn't because it will just dry inconsistently. So you get all the moisture out of your brush. I have not gone into the water yet. And I can just go in with just a damp brush now and I can just suck up that excess paint at the bottom. And that will just dry a lot easier or, and more even now. So you're really just playing with physics at this point. I'm creating an area that's less moist than what I'm going into. And so with capillary action, it sucks the excess moisture into the area that's less, okay? So we talked about loading the brush. We talked about not overloading the brush, using the towel to control some of the moisture so we can get some of that tip back. Now let's take a little bit of a look at what that actually can do for you as far as getting the tip back in the brush. So even if I just do this, I've seen this quite often, people will just go like that. And then they try to get some nice 
thin lines, and I'm not really getting that. I'm trying. It's starting to get a little bit better. But you see, the reason why it's starting to get easier is, and you guessed it, I've emptied a lot of moisture out of this brush, and now I'm starting to get control of my tip as the moisture is starting to leave the tip. So if we want nice, sharp, thin lines out of the tip of our brush to start painting, that's where this comes in handy. So if you're not painting a really big area and you wanna get some fine little details and use that nice tip on your brush, load your brush in the exact same way, then you're just gonna go in here and you're going to just dab the tip of your brush a fair bit more. And then when I come in here, right away, I can get nice, thin details out of the tip of my brush. And I'm not doing anything different here than what I did there except I controlled the moisture more. So I get all the excess moisture out of the tip of my brush. And that gives me the fine little hairs that the tip of this brush has. And you know, you can go the other way too, right? Bring that brush out. Maybe you want to paint some grass or anything. You just get a lot more control. Okay. So that's the main things that I wanted to talk to you about today. So not overloading your brush, right? Making sure that you at least if you've got water in it, or it's fully loaded, that you at least give it a little bit of a wick. So if nothing else, do that. Then if you're looking at your brush, and you're wondering why you're not getting some nice little fine lines, then go to your towel or sponge or something and it's going to take some experimentation because every brush is going to be a little bit different maybe some of you are watching this and go okay how many times did ian do that it it really that's specific to how much paint i put in here the absorbency of this towel and this particular brush so whatever your um, combination of materials is going to be it's going to be different it's not you know tap five times and then go you're going to have to play with it. Get a little scrap piece of paper out. Try some of these things and see how they look. And, you know, you're going to learn about moisture control in the process of doing that. And the other thing that we spoke to as well is how much more area you can cover when you're fully loading your brush properly so that you get a lot of your paint into the belly. Whereas that first little bit, you can see even the color is less rich here. I was just kind of stretching it out and trying to just spread it across the paper until I couldn't go any further. And then I just grabbed a little bit and managed to stretch it out a little bit more. But here it was nice and loaded and I kind of brought it across, started noticing some little dry brush marks at the side, immediately went back into the paint and just continued on. And I got a much nicer, a bigger area. And I was able to paint it quite quickly. So I hope this was of interest to you. Moisture control is a big part of successful watercolor painting. And uh, you and I can always get a little bit better at it, and uh, I'm sure you can as well. So thank you very much for tuning in and watching this 14th episode of Watercolor Fundamentals. I hope you've been enjoying them. If you are, feel free to visit my Patreon page, um, which is new. I've just had it up for a little bit. And I intend to be doing some pretty cool things uh, through through Patreon. I've got a, um, a live stream I'm going to do later in August for some of my patrons, which is going to be great. We're going to I'm going to live paint a um, Rufus Hummingbird, which should be great. And also I intend to do host some small workshops through um, Patreon as well. And of course, there's going to be some other content that I'm going to put up through there. 
um, some line drawings from some past paintings along with the finished paintings and so on and so forth. So do check that out. And also the option there is you just want to join. Um, the support is always appreciated. So thanks for tuning in, everyone. And we'll see you next time. Bye.